Hello everyone, it's another um, video about how not to write a novel. Today I haven't got that much done. Um, I've done a lot of odd bits of writing on different projects and jotted down another idea that I might end up writing sometime in the future, but I've done surprisingly little on my novel for Camp Manorama. So I will have to catch up with that um, as the month goes on. And I know I keep saying that, but um, I'm making progress, which is better than nothing. I have finished off the chapter I was writing yesterday, or almost finished. There's a brief fight and then the drinker gets away, which leads into an argument between Julian and Alex because he thinks that as the soldier he could have done better and she's possibly not entirely certain about what they're doing. Um, you know, would this drinker stop attacking people if he knew it was harmful or if he if he's only feeding on criminals is it right to kill him she's not admitting any feelings like that but she's hesitating just enough that it makes a difference i'm not sure if she goes straight into that argument or if i could take a break from them and go back to Yuki. Or more likely, I think I'll go to the other members of the group, uh, Mark and Daryl, and have a kind of group meeting because they're talking about admitting another person to the group, somebody who wants to help them out. Um, a Another former soldier, which Julian would like, but this guy's become a mercenary um, and he has a gift of his own. His experience is quite different from hers. I don't want to go into too much detail about that until he shows up because it might get changed. But his name is Dutch. In the original sketch of the um, story, the first rough plan that was just a couple of paragraphs, He's mentioned as a potential romantic lead, but I'm not sure if he still has that role or not. Um, he could have been the love interest for Yuki, who I realise we haven't seen for quite a number of chapters. Well, I, I don't know, because it seems like it's ages since I've written about her, but really, I've not written a full chapter since then, so it's not that long. It just kind of distorts your sense of how long things are taking when I'm writing so slowly. So I'm not sure if I need to get back to Yuki sooner rather than later, or just um, keep on going. However, when we do get back to Yuki, I do know what that scene's going to be, so it could be that's a good one for me to start writing next. Because the deal with Yuki is going to be that she's trying to be human. That's her big objective in life, to be normal. But because the abilities that she's got include enhanced senses more than anything else, she can hear a shout from miles away. Um, she could see the stars through the clouds. She's going to find it very hard not to notice when something's going wrong in the city. So she stumbles on a drinker attack and she feels like she needs to do something. So she's going to start maybe being a bit of a vigilante on her own, hunting down the drinkers who are terrorising the city. And then she's going to run into this group of gifted people who are also hunting them. And the conflict there will be, first they see someone else doing the same thing they are, so initially they assume that she's a lone gifted. But then that, um, I'm less confident with that because that seems too similar to the story of Hunter's Gift. 
So I'm not sure what they're thinking at first. But they will come into conflict because they're pursuing the same enemy. And they might initially start out as allies, then they realise she's not human. Or she's having more and more trouble keeping it secret from them, if that makes sense. Um, actually thinking about it, while I've got the political plot with an organisation of humans who know about drinkers, the people who are doing the false ID stuff, that means that it's possible to have them working on the same case, knowing about each other, without asking, why do you have the strength to fight them? Because they come across each other while they're investigating the death of Walker, who's tied to one of the drinkers that they're both following. And they realise there's some kind of criminal organisation that's supplying forged documents for drinkers. They don't know if it's run by drinkers or if it just works for anybody who wants false documents. But they know this organisation exists and they know that there's been some falling out within the group. And it looks like possibly someone's using drinkers as assassins, which is a big problem that they would want to deal with. They will both be investigating that. Therefore, when the gifted group finds out that Yuki is investigating, they assume she's some kind of amateur detective, someone who wants to be a hero and solve crime. They don't initially realise that she knows about the unnaturals. So initially, they think that she's an outsider, so they're trying to keep her out to protect her. And she knows this, and she doesn't want to admit the truth to them. So she's trying to follow the investigation without letting them know that she's not human. But then, as they start working more closely, you know, as they start to accept her help, it's going to get harder and harder for her to keep her secret. Now, the original plan, I had that told from her perspective, but at the moment, both points of view are coming out pretty interesting. So you've got this gifted group and this girl, Yuki, and they're accepting her help because she's able to find things out that they can't. She's better at the detective work. But they want to make sure that they're the ones to face off against the bad guys and that this information doesn't go to the police. But she's trying to keep her secret and that's going to lead to some natural conflict between these two different groups of heroes. So I, I think a lot of the tension in this book will be, is she going to be able to keep it secret? Will they feel like they have to kill her? And then that could open up some more background about why Julian hates the unnaturals so much. Um, which I, I don't want to go into yet because that's still up in the air mostly. Sorry, I'm finding it quite hard to talk at length. I find that after just a minute talking, my throat's full of gunk. And I think I've still got the tail end of a cold, so... Uh, I think I'll call it a day for today. Um, sorry, I've not actually read out any text to you, but if you want to read what I've been writing, there should be a link down there in the description. There's also a space for you to leave comments. If you want to get notified about new videos, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see tomorrow's, if it's already up, then there should be a link somewhere. And if you want to go back and look at yesterday's, there should also be a link somewhere. Who knows, I might actually be pointing at them the right way around this time. So, for now, bye.